clouds of smoke spew from the shattered windows of a fabric factory. Deadly tongues of flame furiously consume everything in their path. The firefighters on the scene are overwhelmed by this inferno in a suburb of Lima, Peru. More help is needed. Firefighters at a station across town are called in. When volunteer firefighter Guido Macoso arrives, he hears rumors that there may be a bomb inside the building. When I got there, the people on the scene were telling us to be very careful. Due to the history of terrorism in Peru, the police always take extra precautions because there could be a bomb. Because of the bomb scare, firefighters follow a cautious procedure to enter the building. As teams attack the blaze on the outside, volunteer Makoso leads his unit into the building with gushing water hoses. When I entered the building, I couldn't see at all. There was so much smoke, I had to feel my way around in the intense heat. Fortunately, all of the workers were able to escape the burning factory. Now, police keep everyone as far from a blaze as possible. An aerial basket lifts two volunteer firefighters to blast water at the upper floors. But for no apparent reason, the water pressure drops and the smoke thickens, blinding the firefighters with its intensity. Inside the basket, the firefighters adjust the water hose, while on the ground, Guido Macoso tries to increase the water pressure. But as he works... Without warning, a powerful explosion propels an enormous fireball from the second-story window, slamming directly into the firefighters. The cameraman videotaping the spectacle is thrown to the ground. He regains his footing to record the ensuing chaos as firefighters rush to help their fallen comrades. Just before the blast, Guido Macoso was working on the ground below the basket when the explosion ripped past him. At the moment of the explosion, a huge fireball came towards me, knocking me backwards. The impact was so strong, firefighter Macoso was thrown 15 feet into the air. Help immediately arrives to bring him to the hospital. Incredibly, he has suffered only minor burns. I had equipment on, so fortunately I wasn't hurt. The air tanks I was wearing cushioned my fall. The firefighters in the basket are injured, but incredibly also survived the blast. One of them, Oscar Ruiz, is rushed to the hospital and immediately treated for first and second degree burns on his face and neck. Miraculously, he makes a full recovery. The day of the fire, we were coming down in the basket, when suddenly a huge orange ball of flame came straight at me. I couldn't believe my eyes. The blaze is stubborn and takes firefighters another 10 hours to bring under control. Finally, nothing is left but charred remains. Now fire officials want to know what caused the fire and the ensuing explosion. They learned that terrorists have been demanding protection money from the factory owners. The fire was intentionally set, according to Officer Julio Rojas, a bomb technician with the Lima Police Force. We were able to determine that the fire was started by terrorists who poured gasoline over the fabric and ignited it. The fire quickly spread, and when the explosion rocked the factory, Officer Rojas initially thought a bomb had detonated. But after an investigation, the blast was identified as actually the result of a backdraft. This life-threatening phenomenon is one of the biggest hazards facing firefighters anywhere, according to Captain Steve Ruda of the Los Angeles Fire Department. A backdraft situation is probably one of the most terrifying words a firefighter can hear. When there is a fire, there is a built-up heat and gases and smoke. And all those heat and gases in the fire is starving for oxygen. Captain Ruda says this is exactly what the fire did in the Lima factory building. When it cannot find its oxygen, it starts to build in pressure, build, 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 until finally some type of oxygen is filtered into the building, and then it becomes explosive to the point where it is deadly. And once it gets that oxygen, all that energy, it's like a freight train coming at you, and you can't get out of the way. 
but actions can be taken to prevent or eliminate the severity of the explosion. So what we have to do as firefighters is to get that heat and gas to escape. And we do that by going to the roof of the structure, using our axes and chainsaws or whatever we need to do to open up the roof of that building, allowing that pressure inside to be alleviated. Fortunately, the Lima firefighters survived their encounter with this scary phenomenon and gained new knowledge that will help better protect them in the future.